Hi, welcome back. Uh, the view is a little different today in the office because I am uh, going to talk about perspective. So I thought it would have been a little, um, it would have been a missed opportunity if I had you looking at the same view you look at every Facebook Friday, which is me standing at my desk. So this is the long view of the office where uh, the comfy, oops, wrong way, comfy chairs that you sit in. My not so, how the heck do I do this? Not so comfy chair that I sit in. <laughs> I have to rectify that. Uh, but I thought this week I would talk about perspective. And uh, some of this came about because I've been having meetings with like my strategy team and marketing and uh, all the different elements that go into running your own business and running your own successful business. And one of the things that you do is you say, okay, well, why do people want to hire you? What work are you doing that you know you provide a service for? And someone who was there contributed that they thought some people hire me because they they want that um, happiness, that sense of happy that I seem to have. And that, uh, well, it made me very happy. <laughs> A little redundant there, but it did. And that, but it also made me think that, well, that's because of the perspective that I have developed in my own life and how I look at things and, um, you know, how I engage with people. That's really what brings the joy for me. Now it could be different for everybody, obviously, but I started thinking about, okay, well, how has that impacted the way that I look at life? Because it wasn't the first time that I've been told I look at life a little differently than some people do. But that in and of itself, I think, is a gift if, that we give ourselves, is to be able to look at life the way our wiring, our soul self, and um, our intelligence is seeking to learn and to be in the world. So with this perspective idea, I thought I'd share a little bit about um, my view, not that you don't get that every week anyway, but like my view and how I came to the space of being able to see so many different perspectives. Because when you come in and you have a seat in that chair, or we work Skype, uh, FaceTime, phone, smoke signal, however we're working, uh, the first thing I do is I align my energy with yours so that I can look at whatever situation that's coming up from your perspective and the eyes that and the intelligence and the experience that you may be looking at it through and then also have my own view of it because I don't think I would be much service if I was always joining people in in what may not be working well for them so there's a fine line between empathy and sympathy, and I can certainly empathize with the situation that's going on, but to sympathize means I'm gonna sit in your shit with you and not really my forte. So the perspective aspect of things and how you get to a space of joy within, I think, is to be able to take into consideration many, many different views. So sometimes I'll ask somebody when they're, you know, when you get stuck in a story and you're just telling it over and over again. And one of the things I'll ask is, can you step out of that? Can you, you know, go up to a bird's eye view? And can you look at this from a perspective of what the bird would see or a hot air balloon or your soul self, God, um, your guides, uh, anything except those who have crossed because they're still doing their process. So they're not always the, the one I would take anybody to. Well, I never, I never take it there. If you want to go there, go for it. So this perspective thing allows you to bring in more information. It allows you to um, get out of what 
your critic, what your ego, uh, subconscious, they all live in the same space, what the story that they're telling. So thank you for joining me, ladies. I appreciate it. Um, and the way that I've developed it, I feel like does give me that joy factor because I learn so much from every situation that I'm in and not that I handle them all so fantastically, but I always look at something with a, what else could I take out of this? Um, what else could I learn? Um, if someone says to me that I'm wrong about something, I don't just assume they're correct but I also make space for, mm, I could be, uh, so tell me why I might be, <laughs> and then I'll take that into consideration too. What this does is it takes the pressure off your shoulders to know everything, because we can't possibly know everything. And yeah, I think we've been raised with that message that there's something wrong with you if you don't immediately know how to handle a situation or if uh, you, I don't know, didn't do your homework or whatever the case may be. So the perspective also allows you, being willing to see a perspective from another person's point of view also allows for expansion of your world. There have been so many concepts that someone would launch at me and I'd be like, what, that's just nuts. And then I'll think about it later and go, you know what, that's kind of fascinating to me. Um, it happened actually last week in boot camp. Um, I was hearing my critic. It was talking so loudly, I couldn't even hear my own <laughs> out of breath. And I could hear, but I was making excuses for why I couldn't do something. And um, nobody cared whether I could do it or not. Like nobody was critiquing me except myself. And I asked somebody who had just done this, uh, uh, oh, I can't remember what it's called. Uh, anyway, one of those uh, rugged maniac only to the higher extreme. I can see the t-shirt, I just can't remember what it's called. Kelly chime in here and tell me what it was called. Uh, and I said to him, aren't you sore? And he looked at me, he goes, yeah. And then he just kept doing the exercise <laughs> that we were doing and something clicked in my head there. And I think it's because I really have trained myself to look at the perspectives of anyone I'm with and I thought, yeah, so he's sore. Let's just do it. And that helped me this week when I went back and because I made a commitment to myself that I wasn't going to complain. Now, that doesn't mean I don't use my Vicky humor when we're climbing a stinking hill that you have to get down on your hands and knees. And um, Spartan, Spartan, that's what it was. Ooh, good timing, Cal. Um, ooh, not a Ragnar, but I want to do one of those. Uh, so he did the Spartan, the 10 mile up. Ugh. Anyway, um, so shout out to the crew that did that from Soul Sport and Fitness. But he just said it so naturally that it clicked in my head. And I don't, didn't tell him this, but um, I'm really appreciative of that interaction because when I went back this week, I went into it with, I am going to do the best I can do with where my body is today and whatever <laughs> energy that I can put out and whatever conditioning I'm in. And I had so much more fun. Uh, I slipped in the mud one time. That was not so fun, but funny. Um, so that's the perspective too, you know. <laughs> and the even when I didn't do the five times up this ridiculously steep hill, in times past, that would have rolled around in my head and I would have beaten myself up for it. And even though I knew it wouldn't serve me in any way, it would still be back there. And this week it wasn't. It was like I did do the other hill, however many times we had to do it. And, you know, and I did do all the other elements that were there. So walking away, the perspective was I rocked this, even if it wasn't exactly 100% what um, was possible. But then if it was, would I have anywhere to grow? So part of why I'm sharing this is that 
so often I hear from people that I their perspective is that they should already know everything, be everything, um, and be at the height of the pinnacle of whatever's going on. And I think that takes away from the joy in life and of what we are here to do, which is is to learn. So when somebody's offering you an opportunity and they're willing to give their perspective, we can call them opinions if you want, um, but they're willing to give you those, it's not gonna hurt you to take it into consideration. And it may even give you more um, uh, energy to work with. It may even give you more um, knowledge in order to approach something. So be mindful of that, like be looking for that. And I know there are some people that just wanna share their opinion and they can't back it up, but that's fine. You don't have to take it. I'm just saying be considerate and be in consideration that there's some information there that you would um you could garner from and there have been some people in my life who have said that i only wear rose colored glasses hey amy hi cal uh deborah why are we fewing um but that you made it you made it to the thing <laughs> the uh facebook live so the um the idea of pausing and hearing what someone else has to say can help you to shift how you look at your own life. And the rose colored glasses, people have said that that's how I look at life, but I really don't because I think I see the truth there. I just don't always comment on it. Um, but I know that there's so much more joy to life than we're letting in. And I think it's because we're so far, so much in our head we can't see the other perspectives that are out there. So back up, be willing to listen, um, be willing to uh, hear the knowledge that, that exists in the world. And then maybe also look at um, other ways of getting there. So there's obviously the listening, there's the reading, um, researching, just garnering any knowledge you can do. There's also from uh, 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 self information space that like you can use the Oracle cards. Um, well, this is the book that comes with Oracle cards. So Oracle cards are um, a form of divination. So they can be guidance uh, for you. I absolutely love them when I first started doing readings, I used the cards and then <laughs> I started doing spreads and then I would do the whole reading and then go, oh, do you want me to flip those cards over? Uh, so then I realized I didn't need to cart 10 decks of cards around with me anymore. So uh, the Oracle cards, there's hundreds of decks. So you can go with what lights you up. Uh, I just got this deck in it's called the sacred traveler um denise lynn uh, she tends to do uh, uh earth based uh native american uh, very grounded work and i needed that at this time with the energy and so the book explains it you can do a spread you could take a class um but a lot of them have the oh that's a good wonderful i pulled that one the other day it's still on the top um, so it has a, a message in there, and then the book then goes into into more detail and um, finding sanctuary. Who needs to find some sanctuary, some peacefulness inside? Um, so those are a great tool of getting a different perspective because when you're using them, you're you have something tangible when you're asking questions of your guides, of the universe, of your soul self, they're a way to affirm that you're not only seeking a different perspective, but you're receiving something as well. So, you know, sometimes we'll send a prayer or we'll invocation or something that we're, we're asking for help, but the, that channel's not so clear, so we don't get the download as well. Um, I love these cards, and there's, like I said, there's so many. Uh, if you have any questions, you can um, email me, and I'll 
maybe suggest a couple, but uh, they're a great way to get yourself out of your thinking head and more into your knowing space and into that perspective, right? Where you can see above whatever the situation that's going on. You can ask a direct question. One of the things I like to ask is, uh, what do I need to know? Because sometimes, you know, you get wrapped up and you, you don't know specifically what's going on, but that's a, a good way to shift it. So having humor, around the idea that you can absolutely change your perspective. We can change our mind, we can change our opinion, um, we can change where we live, and there's just change is amazing part of life. Uh, so having the humor, I think is important when considering a different perspective and um, and working with your own perception. I was having, a conversation with a friend of mine and she was talking about how she'd recently gained weight and that was so different for her because she's always been thin and I was like yeah I got nothing to work with because <laughs> I've always had a belly I've always had legs that could push you your car out of a ditch so my perspective was <laughs> is not coming from that of a person who's ever really been thin um, unless you count you know, second grade or something. But uh, so we had a good laugh about that. And then I paused and, and thought, well, what must that feel like, right? To haven't experienced that before and then having like more of yourself to cart around. So it was, <laughs> it was definitely a, a good way to reiterate the fact that you can learn from any conversation and it's fun to take into consideration what that would feel like um, from both perspectives because she did it with me too you know she felt like what that would be and also from the idea that regardless of what our physical being is like the perception and the perspective that we are all love is what matters i think um so so maybe look at is there a way that you are blocking yourself from seeing other perspectives so if you catch a statement coming out well into your head it doesn't always come out the mouth thankfully um some of us have the edit buttons but if you have something that comes in your thinking space of that someone shouldn't do something or they shouldn't live like that or they should know better any of the shoulds um, any of the judgment about how someone else is living their life that means you need a little bit of perspective help number one you need to back the heck up because it's not your life so unless they're asking for your perspective mm, zip it um, but then you could also do the, the, the work within to say, well, why don't I consider where they're coming from? Now, this is never to excuse abuse or poor behavior, um, illegal behavior or anything like that. Um, I once worked with this gentleman. Um, I was working with those who were incarcerated and he looked at perspective. There's a fly in my perception. Um, he actually looked at me and said he didn't understand why he was in the position he was in. Like he couldn't believe that he was there. And I, it may be not one of my finest moments, but I looked at him and I said, you sold bleeping, I said the word, drugs. And you're still confused about how you got here? So he hadn't ever considered that that wasn't okay. And then, so I took my step back. I mean, I felt like he needed to hear that, but I took my step back and said, okay, now let's look at the circumstances that led you to making those decisions because that's the perspective we really need to get into. That's, the, that's what we have to look at. And um, he, <laughs> I did love working with him uh, because it was just so honest. It was right there. Uh, no sugarcoating going on. So the ability to take into consideration, I didn't agree with what he did, far from that, but I could 
have compassion about what led him to that space. Um, so look, catch yourself. When, if you're stepping into somebody else's um, life and what they're doing and how they must be feeling, oh, that's another one. They must be feeling this. Really? They must be? They absolutely have to be? You don't know that for sure. So again, unless they invite you in, unless they say something, let's just pay attention to our own paper. Like they say in school, don't cheat off your neighbor. Well, when you look into other people's world and you try to figure out what their perspective is, not only are you leaking energy from your own, you are contributing um, discordant energy into their field. And I just think we have to butt out unless invited in. So one of the ways um, that you can also tell that you may not be in such a joyful appreciation of perspective <laughs> is if you're really stubborn and you won't change your position. Again, not around abuse, use your, use your intelligence, you know what it's not around. But the, if you're, you won't change how or what or understand why someone may be doing something, then you aren't growing and you aren't allowing yourself to take into consideration the other perspectives. So, um, you know, some people have said to me that I shouldn't run or work out or do any of those things because it's going to, I don't know, deplete my system. And I definitely take the information in, but then I also take into consideration, they just don't want to do it. It's not that I'm doing any harm to myself if I enjoy it. Uh, but that's a perspective that I could fight against. I could be stubborn. I could state the numbers and the cases and all that kind of stuff. Why, why, why? <laughs> it's just taking into consideration their, pers their perspective and their perception because they don't want to do it is fine. Um, but I also don't need to stand in stubbornness and, and argue my case. So if you are, you may not be willing to see where someone else is coming from. It doesn't commit you to any hard and fast rule to be willing to consider where people are coming from. And here's a, here's a wild idea. Why don't we just ask them? What do you mean by that? Um, how is it that you see it that way? Uh, could you share with me your perspective? It opens up dialogue. See how that would do that? Isn't that amazing? Try it with your kids. It's a lot of fun with kids because their view of life is hysterical um, and often very spot on. So the, um, the thing that was coming up, the other thing that was coming up from a few people this week, I love when there's trends and I love following those energy trends, is that um, just difficulty in relationship, I see that a lot in here, um, but not being able to take into consideration their partner's perspective because they were so mad about whatever the situation was, whatever the circumstances were that led to the discord in the relationship. They, didn't want to. It wasn't a matter of not being able to, it was didn't want to see the other person's perspective. Well, if you want to be in a relationship that works, you need to learn that skill. And that's in work, it's in uh, personal life, it's with your mechanic, um, doctor, whatever the relationship there is. Take it from their perspective. Or even your pets, you know, think about it, stop Stop humanizing pets. <laughs> um, take it from the perspective of the animal and what is in their wiring. Um, and one of the other things that I was hearing is that, you know, that grass is greener thing. It would be better to jump and go into other relationship. No, it won't. Because until you're able to see where you are and what circumstances led to how you're seeing and how you're acting in a relationship, you, you will not do well. You will just recreate the situation. And this is where perspective comes in, right? Being able to see this isn't about the other person. This isn't about the person coming into my life because they may just be coming in to bring perspective. 
They may be coming in to show you what's possible in the world. And then you can take mindful and kind action if that's the direction you want to go in. It's not necessarily that person. A lot of the times it's that that person represents an energy uh, frequency and they may stand in the uh, place where you are in alignment with then and they're giving you an example of all the other millions of people who would resonate there as well. But your work is still to consider where you are, how you're contributing to the relationship, and how you can either help it heal or you can call it to completion. Um, kindly, can't do anything about how they, the other person acts, but kindly and understanding that it is now currently my perspective that this is not where I want to be any longer. So, um, I didn't know I could say perspective that many times in 25 minutes. So <laughs> I am off to do my perce perceiving in another session. And I wish you the greatest of, well, all time. And hope that you can play with this a little bit. And that you can start to consider that, number one, you don't have to know it all. You don't have to hold all of the information. It's just not possible. And you can also release the pressure on yourself that someone else may have to know it all and the pressure you're putting in a relationship. So it, you know, if you wanna be in that space of whatever happy is for you, this is the work that needs to be done. It's, there's no drive-through, there's no magic wand that happens. This is stuff that I consciously work on daily and I don't, think I have it all wrapped up and all figured out. But if the statement is true that, and I've heard it a few times, not just in that one session, that people want what I have. Well, don't, don't, <laughs> don't perceive what I have to be what is good for you. Get in there, figure out what works for you. And if you need help, you know where to find me. So have a good weekend and the rest of time. And I will talk to you soon. Bye.